Hello, welcome to my channel Dharma Meeks and welcome to this Halloween project. This time I made a vampire's goblet. I started out with a normal wine glass. No, I didn't use one from my home, I just bought one very cheaply from a secondhand store. Uh, to transform this into a goblet, first I need to facilitate the paint sticking to it. And to do that, I'm going to add crinkled up tissue paper to the glass with some watered down PVA glue. This will cover the sleek surface of the glass, make it easier for the paint to stick to it, and also add a lot of interesting texture. This is kind of my go-to method when I'm working with glass. Obviously it's a very sleek surface, so painting directly on it results with the acrylic paint scratching right off or even peeling off in large swaths. So as I knew I wanted to have it completely opaque, I had no problem covering the entire surface. So I'm just working in sections, first doing the top half, the cup shape, and then I'm going to do the bottom just so that I have something to hold on to. I've also made sure to go over the lip of the cup um, so that I can paint some of the inside, well, at least as much as it's going to be visible when the cup is full. When the upper half has dried, I'm adding tissue paper to the stem and the foot of the glass as well with the exact same method. I also patched some of the bits that were a little bit sparse or maybe I missed them because um, tissue paper is sort of transparent when you first add it on wet. When the glass has fully dried, I am going to base coat it into a layer of black acrylic paint and I'm just thoroughly painting over it making sure to get my brush into all of the wrinkles formed by the tissue paper and of course I'm doing this in two sections again just so that I have something to hold on to each time when the black base coat has dried, I am going to use a very dark green. This layer may seem like it's useless. The end result of the couplet is obviously not green. But the reason I decided to add this layer of dark green is because just the slightest of that green showing through is going to give it that depth of color and complement the gold. After the green layer has dried, I'm adding a very watered down wash of black shellac ink. This doubles as sealing in the coats of paint I've already added because the next layer is vigorously rubbing on with my finger the gorgeous gold paint and this is where you can see how that undertone of green really helps bring out the gold and make it shiny, have a cool gold tone of course, I wanted to make this goblet quite fancy, so I'm pulling out my stash of metal decorative thingies. I don't know what to call these, I just bought them in bulk from eBay a few years ago. So I've picked out some shapes that I think are going to work really well um, with my goblet. 
these are quite thin and flexible metal they're probably like press punched in the factory but they are thin enough for my really good scissors to cut through so I've cut three of the plainer rosette ones in half and I'm also trimming off any of the excess and I'm going to attach them around the lip of the goblet. I'm also going to be using these strings of rhinestones um, at the edges. But before I can do any of that, I wanted to darken um, the area of the goblet just under the gold pieces so that they stand out a little bit more. So I just dry brushed a little bit more black on there. And then I'm attaching these metal pieces with some hot glue. It's a little bit tricky and yes, I did burn my fingers a few times because of course metal conducts heat. Now, of course, I want to decorate the foot of the goblet as well. So I'm using the same rosettes, but this time, instead of just cutting them in half, I'm cutting off some slices and making them into sort of these fan shapes that complement the edge of the foot. And in between those fan shapes, I'm going to cut apart this flower shaped ornament and use those petals to fit in between. And I'm also um, trimming little bits and just shaping them perfectly the way I want them. And then of course more hot glue and more burnt fingers. I'm trying to be as symmetrical as I can but of course it's not perfect I have to work really fast with the hot glue um, but I think I managed to be decent enough with the arrangement um, now I'm working with a different petal shaped um, metal piece and I've cut off some of those petals and I'm just sticking them in between um, those half rosettes and they're kind of like teardrop shaped and fit really well in there. I'm also going to use some of the full flowers to decorate the very body of the goblet. And I'm, of course, applying a little bit more black paint behind them so they stand out more. Now when I'm gluing on the flowers, I am using these gorgeous ruby-colored rhinestones. They're actually not rhinestones. They're rhinestone-shaped, but they are handmade resin capuchons, faceted capuchons. I didn't make them. I actually got them as a present from a friend. Uh, and they have sort of like a swirl of ruby red and dark bordeaux. And I think it's very elegant and vampiric looking. I am using cheapy rhinestones though kind of stringed together to go around the perimeter of the foot and around the lip. These are still decorative and they will get painted over, they won't look as uh, plasticky and cheapy, but they also serve to hide the edges of where I cut those metal elements with the scissors. When I'm done with all the gluing, I'm going in with a little bit more of black dry brushing, kind of going over the cheapy rhinestones and also creating some shadows around the middle of the flower shaped decorations and edges and nooks, just to give it a little bit more depth. 
And as a final touch, I'm going back with a little bit of gold uh, just to freshen up some of the areas. And there it is with all my elements attached and fully painted. Now I can focus on the contents of the goblet. Now to fill in the majority of the cup, I'm going to use uh, some wrinkled up aluminium foil and I'm just sticking it in with a little bit of hot glue. I'm using aluminium foil because it won't expand like crinkled paper, uh, it will hold its shape, but it's light and it's cooperative to work with. I'm also filling up the very top of the cup with a generous amount of hot glue and I let it set. Then I mixed a dark blood color. I know it looks a little bit brownish but this is going to be the undertone for the bright red. And I'm applying a generous amount over the set hot glue so that it looks like the goblet is full of blood. I'm also painting one of the sides so that it looks like someone has been drinking from it and it has been tilted and stained one of the sides. And of course I'm also painting some drips right on the side and then just some small drops on the foot. When that layer of dark red paint has completely dried, I am applying bright crimson red right from the tube. I looked up images of realistic blood props um, on Google. Uh, I did get a little bit queasy, but um, this method seems to work best for when you want your bloody props to look realistic but still look red on camera. Now to make everything glossy and shiny, like wet, I'm going to be using this product called Glossy Accents, which is technically a sort of a resin um, that cures just by being exposed to the open air. And I'm just applying a thin layer over the entire surface of the contents of the cup. And I'm also um, going over the drips. It looks milky white now, but it's going to set completely transparent. I've also taken a little bit of risk um, by putting on the glossy accents while the bright red paint was still a little bit tacky, so not fully dried. Usually it's risky to mix water into resin. It can have a strange reaction. But I took my chances hoping that it was dry enough to not cause a reaction, but wet enough for the resin to mix in a little with the paint. And thankfully, I was right. And the experiment was successful. And it resulted with these gorgeous swirls inside of the cup. I think this is a cup of blood worthy of a vampire queen. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Do let me know in the comments below what you think about this project. I would love to hear some feedback. If you like this sort of Halloween themed spooky crafts, I am doing a series right now on my channel, so I invite you to go visit it. I publish new crafty videos every week. Thank you for watching. I hope you're having a nice day. Bye.